Hi, this is Stan Webb, video host, and here we're here this morning with Dr. Molinax, whose specialty is neurology. Welcome, Dr. Molinax. Thank you. Um, why don't you tell us a, a little bit about what you've done and what your specialty is, and with it, what is a neurologist? Right, I've been I was in practice for 36 years in Wichita in adult neurology, which includes a lot of different neurologic diseases. Probably the major thing I saw was uh, migraines, but also dealt with number, a number of other things such as neck pain um, and a variety of diseases. Well, what would you say for, for senior citizens, what would be some of the top diseases or conditions that's affecting senior citizens in Wichita? The top three or four include um, Parkinson's disease, strokes are a major concern for senior citizens, seizures, surprisingly, mm -hmm. are a concern, and the one that bothers most people is dementia. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about dementia, because we hear a lot about it, and, you know, dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, I've seen it in my wife's family, and you know it, it can be quite devastating. What exactly is dementia and Alzheimer's, and then what's the difference between the two? Dementia is a broad term. That means the loss of previously known information. This can include a variety of things, including judgment, organizational skills, as well as memory. In the big bubble of dementia, there are a variety of causes. Um, frontotemporal dementia, Lewy body dementia, multi-infarct dementia, for example. But the biggest subgroup is Alzheimer's disease, and it's the one that we fear the most. And, you know, you mentioned that people fear that. I mean, I because I know that it's in my wife's family, she's terribly afraid that you know she's become gonna you know become afflicted with it. Why do you think people fear it so much? Number one, it is genetic, and number two, it is a progressive disease that robs a person's entire being. Yeah, and that that would be really really hard. Um, what are some early warning signs that, and then at that say a family member or a loved one might notice, and then at what point should a physician be called in to do a professional evaluation rather than, oh, I'm just getting older, I can't remember things anymore. What are some early warning signs? Some of the early things to be uh, aware of are little things. Difficulty balancing the checkbook, oh. for example, whereas the person always could before. Organizing their information for the tax preparer. Problems at the kitchen for getting recipes that they'd always used. Making mistakes, forgetting to turn off the oven. Or storing your purse in the oven because it would keep it safe from robbers and then turning the oven on, mm. forgetting that the purse was there. Um, Forgetting appointments. I'll meet you at the restaurant at noon and the person forgets. Mm. Uh, forgetting dates. Grandma always used to send me a birthday card with five dollars and now she doesn't remember my birthday. Those are early things. Um, getting lost. Forgetting where the car is in the parking lot. Um, forgetting where the store is that they've been to hundreds of times. Oh, so these are all early signs. Yes. Okay, so what would be signs of progression other than the early signs? What would be like the next steps? Because some of these I've kind of heard of, but some of them are, are little things that you wouldn't really think that much about. And that's the problem. People oftentimes attribute these symptoms to, oh, she's just getting old. Um, but they should be taken seriously. Um, as things get worse, then they have 
more difficulty with personal hygiene, forgetting to take a shower, refusing to take a shower, mm -hmm. refusing to change clothes, incontinence. And in, in what point, you know, just an occasional forgetting your keys or where you park the car, but it, at what point should a physician be called in where really a professional evaluation needs to be done? Any time that the patient itself is concerned, okay. any time that a family member is concerned, any time that a friend contacts a family member with concerns, need to be taken seriously, and a physician should be involved. <clears throat> I would much rather see a patient and reassure that person, they're fine, there's nothing wrong with you, than for the disease to progress until there's nothing to be done. I know even in my profession, you had mentioned some early warning signs about money. Um, there's been several instances in my career where I've had to call a family meeting because I know the person's financial habits, you know, they become very distraught about money or, you know, it's, it's, and it's just like anxiety building up. And they're, the family said, well, they're just a little forgetful, they're just this and they're just that. And then some of the family members didn't know, some did, and some noticed some things and some didn't. But, you know, then we got them to, you know, talk to a physician and then they started getting affairs in order just because of power of attorneys and, and all right. those, there's a lot of things that needs to be done. And um, from what, what I've seen, money, you know, from what, just because of the characteristics that people normally have, the worry really increases. I don't know if you've noticed the same things, but you know you said it's like balancing checkbooks and things like that. But um, what I've noticed, and I don't know if it's always true, but that's why I'm asking, <clears throat> is the anxiety has been there. Sure. That's, and it's like, where's my money? What's going on? And I haven't got a statement. And you know, it's just, uh, you know. And it's it's also things like forgetting to pay bills, hmm. paying the same bill more than once. Um, people with memory difficulties are at great risk for scams, and I've seen hundreds of thousands of dollars lost because of scammers. You know, that's, that's, a whole, that's a whole other topic to talk about, but senior scams and fraud and being taken advantage of and with, you know, any type of dementia, mm -hmm. I think it's just, you know, magnified many, many times on the susceptibility. And, you know, you're seeing it you know, much more than I do, just in, in my clientele, but it's, it's really quite sad. It, it's really quite sad. Um, is, is there anything that you'd like to add that you think might be helpful for someone that is concerned about a loved one at this point? Um, or is there any other topics or disease, you know, in your profession that's important? I have told patient people for years that um, if they're concerned that they're going to develop dementia, and even those who have been diagnosed with early dementia, I strongly recommend that they stay active, physically active, mentally active, and socially active. Get off your duff. Turn off the TV and get moving. And have friends over, even, even if it's just for an iced tea. It's okay. You don't have to have a fancy meal, but get involved, get out, get to do things. And does this help them <clears throat> to manage the disease in yes. some way? Does it help with the, pro the progression as well, or is it that may. it may? But I certainly strongly recommend that they stay as active as possible. From a family member standpoint, then I ask them to make every effort to Keep life on a routine as best as possible. If they go to the barber shop once a month, make sure it's the same day of the month. If they, if you go to the grocery store, go to the grocery store on a routine. Go on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Have your life as regimented as possible. 
as in later stages, um, people may forget family relationships. And so I asked them to have photos all around the house of the family members with tags. You know, this is your son, this is his wife, this are his, these are their children, so they can look at them and be reminded. Those are great, great points. Well, Dr. Mullenix, thanks so much for being here and, you know, sharing some of this information because I know it's a big concern for a lot of people. And it's, you know, having these types of diseases and it affects the family members, not just the one that has it, but also those that are involved. So thank you so much for, for sharing that information. Thank you for asking me.